Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayya lahabita fillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem and whoever earns a fault or a sin and then throws it onto someone innocent he is indeed burdened himself with falsehood and manifest sin Ibn Rajib said in regarding to this ayat as we mentioned in the last dars he said, this is because having suspicious thoughts about someone that did not manifest any signs of evil is from the things that Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have forbidden since the one holding the suspicious thoughts combines two things. Number one, earning a fault and sin. And number two, accusing an innocent person of it. And Allah, this is one of the big trials that we face uh, from some of our brothers and sisters who are eager to practice Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf, but they do not have success in that matter. Why? Because they speak about their brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah and they speak about others very quickly and hasty. They're quick to condemn others without verifying the information, without having the tools and the knowledge, the ilm and the fiqh to do so. And this is very imperative to know when to speak out uh, uh, about a makhalif, how, in what situation, who are you giving da'wah to, what are the circumstances, is the khabr, is the, the, <clears throat> the things that are being uh, spoken about, are they verified, or are you just going upon desires or the, say, the hearsay from someone else. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظُّنْ فِنَّ الظُّنْ أَكْتِبُ الْحَدِيثِ he said, beware of suspicion, for verily suspicion is some of the wicked, uh, is from the most vile of speech. And do not be envious of one another. And do not spy upon one another. And do not have enmity towards one another. The Prophet ﷺ forbade these things. Islam forbids these things. That's why being careful and cautious before speaking even about Ahl Bid'ah. And when you do, do so with the haq, do so with truth. And as Ibn Rajib said in the last statement, he, he mentioned those two, <clears throat> two uh, medhmoom, uh ways of speaking about uh, individuals that are forbidden. He said, earning a, uh, because he said, since the one holding the suspicious thoughts combined two things, that when you have suspicion, and then the Prophet ﷺ said, dhun, beware of suspicion. So when you have the suspicion, there are two various sins that you fall into. Number one, you earn a, a fault in a sin for having the suspicion about your brothers and sisters. Number two, you then uh, fall into accusing someone who is innocent. Now this isn't the case of being suspicious about someone who's actually innocent or that you don't have the knowledge and tools because you don't really know if they're innocent. Even if what you heard has a wudge or it is in one way, it, it may appear to be truthful or you took it from someone truthful, but then you spread this. And it's not based upon something that's sound. Then you can achieve sin in both of these ways. But for one, you gain sin for making this mistake. And number two, by being suspicious. And number two, you've accused someone who's innocent of what you've accused them. You accuse them of hezbiya, and they didn't fall into hezbiya. You could, could uh, accuse them of being from Ahl Bidah, and they were not, in fact, from Ahl Bidah, and they did not fall in, in innovation. So this is why it's imperative, Ahabatifillah, to be cautious of these things. Then the Imam Al-Hafid ibn Rajab said, and his entering into the severe threat found in this ayat becomes even greater if there should appear from him, I mean the one who upholds, uh, who holds suspicious thoughts, signs of evil, such as injustice, enmity, little piety, a loose tongue, excessive backbiting, and slandering, jealousy of people for what Allah has given them from his bounty and blessing and rushing to compete to gain a position of authority before due time. Allahu Akbar. This statement is so powerful. And we can think of countless examples in our current time on so many brothers who because they were doing successful da'wah. They were known for being students of knowledge from Ahl Sunnah. But then the people strove to bring them down 
by what appeared to be jealousy, what a, and, and they used those things by having loose tongue, showing enmity, being unjust to those individuals, but yet they look they overlook the faults of those who agree with them. They fall into the same sins or the same mistakes or the same shubahat, but yet they overlook this one because that's his boy, because that's his partner, because that one shares the same opinion on a particular issue. But this other one, we don't make excuses for him. We attack him. We belittle him. We make sure he's no longer imam. We make sure he's no longer given dawah. We make sure he's no longer uh, uh, sharing his ilm that he benefited with the community of Ahl Sunnah. Instead, we belittle them when we slander. And how many brothers we can think of that have been brought down this way or people strive to bring them down? How many students of knowledge that we know that have, Allah has favored them to re reach the highest level as far as students of knowledge from the West that we know of? And yet, the people strive to destroy them, speak about them, make videos about them, make tapes about them, spread. So many people speak about them and don't even know what the issue is anymore. But yet they just make taqlid. They just blindly follow those people who are leaders of backbiting and leaders of having loose tongue and leaders of enmity and leaders of injustice. And this is the this is what we gain from this beneficial speech of Imam Ibn Rajim. So he said, and is entering into the severe threat found in this ayah becomes even greater if they should appear from him. So he's mentioned in the traits of the one. Some people have suspicion, and that is the only thing. They they have a fault, and they tend to be suspicious of others. And this is sinful. But then there are those who accompany with that sinfulness, and this is an explanation of what the Imam is saying. They in addition to being suspicious, they have other signs of evil, such as, as he said, injustice. So they're not just in their speech. They're not just when criticizing individuals. They overlook the faults of their friends, and they attack and belittle others who don't agree with them. And they show enmity and hatred. They show more hatred and enmity towards their brothers from Ahl Sunnah who take from the same ulama, sit in the same duru, same lectures, but yet they allow extreme Sufis who dance and, and seek help from the dead to go unscathed, to go uncriticized, or to be criticized very briefly. But yet their brothers, they're severe against. This is a very dangerous characteristic. And this is a characteristic of a Hizbiyah that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah countless times have warned us against and continue to warn us against. How many go and search for yourselves? Look at the many translations, if you don't know Arabic, of so many of our mashaykh who speak about this, who say, beware so-and-so because he's more severe on Ahl Sunnah than he is with Ahl Bidah. And he, 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 him being known for being amongst Ahl Sunnah for, at, at one point, but yet he spends his time eating the flesh of his brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah. This is very dangerous. Then Ibn Rajim said, so if these attributes, meaning these madmum attributes, these sinful attributes, of which the people of knowledge and faith are not pleased with, are recognized as someone, then indeed he only thinks sickly of the scholars. And if one's refutation of them is based according to the second case mentioned, then he deserves to be countered with contempt and degradation. Meaning if someone is exhibiting this suspicion and these evil characteristics, they deserve to be refuted. And we ask Allah the Almighty to protect us from these traits. Amin, ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he said, he said, and whoever does not have any signs show from him that indicate a specific matter in the total sense, then it is an obligation to take and accept his words according to the best manner of understanding. And it is not permissible to take them in a negative way. This brings up another important issue, Ahabit Allah, that we have to have uh, uh, we have to look to the speech of our brothers and not <coughs> uh, put it in the worst of ways and understand it from the worst of ways but give it the best explanation the most positive explanation and this brings up another point I want to mention and, and end upon is that when we look at the speech of one another 
uh, and of the scholars and when you want to criticize people. Not that you should be eager to criticize people, but the point is for those who enter in those issues that they should look at if they have a general, a general statement that appears to have some falsehood and some goodness in it. Or it, it's a statement in which it's muhtamil, that it is a statement in which some can understand it in a negative way and some can understand it in a positive way. Then you look to the other speech of that same scholar and his other tapes and his other books and, and see that is this consistent to what he says as far as obtaining the meaning for that speech. And this is the madhab of Ahlus Sunnah. This is what you find. How do we understand the Quran? If a verse is general, we understand the the am min al khas. We understand the general verses from the detailed verses. And so the Quran, you fessar al Quran. The Quran explains the Quran. So if you take one verse from the Quran that may have a meaning, that some people take it as a meaning, for example, to exhibit violence, to exhibit severeness and harshness. Severity and harshness. But yet then they or ignore all the verses of Rahmah and mercy and show the and the context of that verse. Then this will be a severe mistake. So likewise, when you look at the speech of your brothers, look to see at their other speech. Is it consistent? Or is this some mistake they made? Or is it something that's just general and then we need to understand it by their other specific speech? So it's very imperative to have husn al to have a, a positive uh, uh, outlook and not be pessimistic with regarding uh, one another. And then Ibn Rajim ended in this section of the treatise. He said, Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, do not suspect evil thoughts due to a word that has come out of, the, out of the mouth of your Muslim brother. Rather, you should find that it is only filled with good. So look for excuses for your brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah bless us with alman nafi, rizqin tayyib, wa amalin mutakabinin, wa ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah. And may Allah bless us all to make it to Ramadan and through Ramadan and benefit from Ramadan, which is coming up soon. And a last point I want to make is also with this statement of Umar radiallahu ta'anu that does not mean that ahla bid'ah, that we don't, that we always hold what they have to say. Uh, in good, no, or someone whose usul is against the usul of Ahl Sunnah. Because then you would use their speech, you would take their speech and try to understand it, of course, in the context that they meant it, and what is consistent with their aqidah, what is consistent with their minhaj and their aqidah. So you would therefore, at the same time, look at a statement of Ahl Bid'ah, which could be muhtamil. And you'll carry that speech in consistency, likewise, with what their previous uh, statements and, uh, and, and, and other tapes and books and statements uh, exhibit. So meaning that if their statement has a meaning of falsehood and you see from their other speech that it's falsehood, then of course we carry it on that. We don't give them the benefit of the doubt. And we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive our sins.